Uh-oh. Hmm. The screen. What's wrong with it? Oh. <laughs> Hey everybody and thanks for joining us. It's a Wednesday night. It's January 20th and um, it's been a busy week. So look, today was a historic day. I'm going to tell you about it, okay? Today is our oldest daughter's birthday. <laughs> yep, Hannah turns 24. What in the world? 24. There's no way. But she's not really 24 yet because she wasn't born until 11:30 at night. So yeah, so we yet. got we got some more time. Hey, <laughs> hey, Carolyn, good to see you. Hey, John from Colorado, awesome to see you. Hey, Missy, thanks for being back. Good to see you again. So hey, thanks for tuning in and, and watching. Um, we we like this time and and we've been doing a lot of birthday celebrating today because. Um, you know, when your kids have a birthday, you celebrate, right? Do you remember a lot about that day 24 years ago? Oh, yeah. I remember everything about it. Hey, Anna and Erwin, how are you <laughs> all doing? It kind of sticks with you. Hey, Frenches. Good to have you all here tonight. So, I was, you know, it. it, it hey, Bonnie, good to see you. It, it, it is historic, you know, because it's Hannah's birthday, but it's historic as well because uh, we saw a president get sworn into office. And mm -hmm. this July, our country will turn 245 years old. And in that length of time, we just now saw our 46th president. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's a pretty historic moment. Uh, yeah. over the course of, of our, our history as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Linda from California, and hey, David and Linda Neesmith, and hey, Cheryl, and hey, Rose. Good to have you all here tonight. So what we want to talk about uh, today is um, a little bit about life according to the kingdom of heaven. And, um, of course, our model and, and the one who teaches us about this is Jesus. Uh, here's how you're supposed to to live your life and and when we make a decision to become a Christian uh, to follow Jesus we are we're entering into a commitment mm -hmm. that we're going to live live a certain way we're going to do our best to um, uh, from the words that we speak to the things that we do we're going to do our best to represent Jesus in everything and yeah. and if you're like if you're like us some days you get it right you do really well and other days um, you, you don't do so well. Mm -hmm. And so um, we want to talk a little bit about um, what it means uh, to live to live a, a holy life. And, and this is a tough one, especially when you're stressed out. Because I think um, I think stress is a great revealer of what's yeah. what's buried down deep mm -hmm. inside. Definitely it is. Um, yeah. Sometimes um, we're not at our best when we're stressed out. And uh, sometimes we keep things bottled up. Sometimes um, mm -hmm. the inner demons that we fight, they just come pouring out in our stress, stressful moments. Right. Um, but in our faith, uh, we're told to live uh, holy lives. So how do we do that when we're going through stressful episodes? Mm. Got any thoughts Good on that? Good question. You just have to pull yourself back, back to Jesus, back to your center just have to keep pulling yourself back yeah and, and well, what if you can't pull yourself back what if you're just not in a place where you, you can do that well i say pull yourself back like you can work at it but it's more like bask in his presence that's more what will help you to find your center again i think mm -hmm. it's, it shouldn't be a striving i don't think i worded that right it's more that you're just being still and you center yourself and you go back to, you know, the heart of it all. Yeah. Hey, Martin and Mary Lou, thanks for being here tonight. Um, so I want to look at a few verses as we talk about living a holy life. And, and the first verse um, comes from 1 Peter chapter 1 and looking at verses 14 through 16. Of course, you know, Peter was one of the apostles 
Uh, Peter was um, known as the one who denied Jesus, mm -hmm. but Peter's also the one who um, Jesus restores, and he preaches this sermon that's recorded in the book of Acts in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and uh, he becomes a leader in the early church. So he, he writes first this letter called First Peter to Christians all over, and Christians who are going through persecution. Uh, so he's probably writing this about 62 or 63 AD because Peter's going to die uh, during the persecution of the Roman Emperor Nero. So mm -hmm. so it's got to be before that. So I think definitely before 64, 65, 65 AD. Okay. And so he's writing to Christians who are suffering, and he's encouraging them uh, to be faithful. But he also has a lot of practical wisdom that he shares. And in these verses... He shares some of that. You got that? So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. I, I like the way that version is, is worded. Don't slip back into your old ways because that's mm -hmm. typically how it happens, right? Right. Right. A little bit at a time, not just all at once. You just mm -hmm. find yourself gradually falling back into old patterns or habits. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's a real thing. And I think if we're honest, uh, all of us can look at times mm -hmm. in our lives where we've slipped back. Yes. Um, so, he, he, but he says something here. He says, um, because of who you are now, you're called to, to live holy, a, live a holy life, be holy in everything you do. And that's a pretty tall order. But holy is not perfection because we can't be perfect. But that's the idea of something that's holy. It's, it, it's, um, it's righteous. It's perfect. It's without right. blemish. Right. But we can't live a perfect life. We have mm -hmm. to lean on his grace, his blood that purifies us and cleanses us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely um, not something we can do on our own. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why... You know, we need a Savior. We need a, a Messiah for our messes. Um, another verse that talks about living a holy life um, comes from the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12. Um, let me stop right here. Hey, uh, Nicole. Hey, Hattie. Good to see you. Hi, Hattie. So, just had to say hi. That, that's our niece, okay? <laughs> and um, But in Romans, chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, who also was killed during the persecution by the Emperor mm -hmm. Nero, mm -hmm. uh, writes about holy living as well. What's, what's he say in that verse? This is one of my favorite verses. So don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I love that, that he changes the way we think to make us a new person. Is that why that's a favorite verse of yours? Yes, I like that a lot. Um, how, how does that work, though? How have you experienced God changing the way you think? It's a supernatural thing, really. Um, but I think if you put yourself in his presence, you put yourself in his word, um, in prayer, he does the work. He changes the way that we think. Mm -hmm. how, has this, how has this played out in your life? Um, it's made me be more of a positive thinker in a lot of ways. Um, it's made me more grateful for what I have, um, just the seizing the moment instead of wishing for things to be different, but instead just being grateful for what I have in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think gratitude is something that we learn. Gratitude, yes, yeah. it's a practice. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, as we talk about um, this whole idea of being holy. Um, and if you guys have some ideas, um, how has God changed the way that you think? Uh, I'd love to hear. Um, type type in the comments. Let us know how God has has changed the way that you think. Because um, I think personal testimony is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let, let, let's think about something else. Uh, a question uh, for the your family and the friends who are closest to you in your life. What would they, how would they describe you? What are three or three to four words they would use to describe you? Just think about that for, for a moment. 
Hmm. You want me to describe you? I don't know if I want to do that live on the internet. I kind of want to hear what you're going to say first. <laughs> That's part of your personality. That's part of it right there. So as you're thinking of those words, I'm going to stop this right now. As you're thinking of those words, <laughs> um, has anyone ever described you as holy? Not holier than thou, but holy. I don't, I don't think so. All right. John writes, shrunk the gray areas for living. Ah, I think I know what he means. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, John. All the way from Colorado. And it's like he's right here. <laughs> so when we talk about what it means to live a holy life, um, the, the word holy is like morally blameless, right? So, um, well, I think you just kind of hit something on the head there when you said holier than thou. I don't think that uh, people don't want to be perceived that way. So it's almost like we don't want to act like we think that we are so much better. Does that make sense? Like, Mm -hmm. And yeah. I and I don't think that I don't really think about describing other people as holy either. That's not really on my radar. Yeah. Well, and I think, and this may be in a different direction. Than what you were going, there's a real danger for us as Christians uh, to be very selective in in how we look at sins, mm -hmm. and that's how we we can become very self righteous and quote yeah. holier than thou. Right. Um, you know, like saying, um, we, uh, we look at our sins and we say, oh, I was having a bad day. Oh, I just had this moment. Uh, oh, oh, I'm a better person than that. But then we look at the sins of other people and we say, I right. cannot believe that. And, and so that, that's where self-righteousness or where mm -hmm. someone else's sins are so much worse than my sins. And, right. and one of the, the harsh points of biblical theology in the Christian faith Mm -hmm. is that sin is why Jesus gave his life on the cross, mm -hmm. no matter if it's a big sin or a small sin or how we categorize it. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Humility. I'm humble. Okay. That's Missy's writing that. Y'all keep the feedback coming here. Keep talking to us. Um, so holiness, though, because we can't be morally blameless, all right? The, the Bible says that everybody has sinned. Everybody has fallen short of mm -hmm. what God intends, okay? So everybody means everybody. So how do we live a holy life? I, I think it starts with internals, not the externals. Uh, Jesus said something to his disciples one time about what it means to follow him mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to the disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. So it's all about denying ourselves. How do you do that? Is that beating up on yourself? What does that mean? I don't think it's beating up on yourself, but I think it's you think about other people. It's it's our human nature to think about ourselves and to protect ourselves. Um that's, that's human nature, but when you can get past that and actually think about other people, that's where it comes in, where you're denying yourself, I think. Yeah. And not that you, you, we still take care of ourselves and our needs. I don't think that, I don't think you should neglect the care of yourself, but it's also important that we are aware that we're not the only people in the universe, that there's other people all around us. Yeah, that's good. And, and sometimes when God calls us, he may call us away from something that we want to do, right? Yeah. And um, he's He's reframing our heart, mm -hmm. um, changing our heart, transforming mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and he's putting us where he, where he wants us. Yeah. But there's a key thing here, because I know we talk about what Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross, uh, follow me um, daily, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
but he starts off saying, if anyone wants to be a follower. Right. So I think Christianity is a voluntary supposition. Mm-hmm. You know, the call to follow Jesus is you're not forced to do it. You sh- At least you shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be pressured to do it. You shouldn't be made feel guilty to do it. it it's, it's, a, it's something that each one of us, we decide whether or not we want to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's where all of this starts. And if we don't want to follow Jesus, then the rest is kind of moot. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, that's tough to take up your cross. When that, that language is, I don't know if in our culture, in our country, if if I really know what that means, if I really have had to do that. Yeah. Um, I live a very pampered life in this country, I think. And I don't really know what the cross is that I have to pick up and carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As far as persecution goes, um, I don't know if I've really, really in endure persecution for being a Christian. Um, now, sometimes I will encounter people that have a very different worldview um, or maybe maybe even be hostile mm-hmm. to the Christian worldview. Um, and so maybe there's some, uh, maybe some words of derision. I, but other than that, I, I can't think of... Well, um, well, persecution to me would be if I could not practice my faith, if I could not worship. Mm-hmm. If I couldn't um, do that, and nothing is holding me back from doing that in this country, so I'm very blessed in that regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So before we get to living a holy life, we have to. It's got to be something that we want to do. It's got to be a desire, right? Um, I want to get better. I want to become more like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so here, here's an illustration. Um, try sketching out your life right now, okay? Take your life, look at your life in its entirety. Uh, start with the highs in your life. Maybe it was um, maybe it was your baptism, mm-hmm. or maybe it was graduation or marriage or children or a job or or whatever. So mentally right now, think of the high moments in your life up to this point, no matter how old you are. What are some of the high moments? I'm thinking. Like meeting me? Well, yeah. Maybe? Definitely. Nah. <laughs> Definitely. So what are we supposed to do with these moments? Okay, so keep up? those right there. Okay. And now make another list in your mind of the low moments in your life. But see, I'm thankful for the low moments. But Yeah. yeah. We're going we're gonna to get there in just yeah. a second. Uh, we're talking about like the failures. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about losses, um, painful moments, the, right. the, the, the low moments in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. What we see with the high and the low moments is they both become defining moments in our lives. Yes. And uh, how those moments define us depends a great deal on how we respond to those moments. Mm. That's good. So... Um, I cannot control everything that is going to happen to me in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, we, we try to come to grips with that. And what we try to do is prepare beforehand of how we are going to respond mm-hmm. to those moments. Right. Well, and faith will get you through those moments. Your faith can become stronger because of those losses or those failures. Um I think we have to have those. It's like you don't know how great it is to be on top of the mountain unless you've been on the valley. And then you can appreciate it. Once you get to experience a success, then you you really appreciate it more. And, and I think holiness is a part of processing those moments. Um, yeah. It's the worldview that we adopt. It's um, the decision that we make of how we're going to respond Mm-hmm. Uh, to the highs and to um, the lows. Because in the highs, we don't want to take all the credit and forget about God. Right. But in the lows, we don't want to to put all the blame on God. 
you see, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So when we talk about holiness and we talk about it starts with what's going on in our heart and what we desire and what we really want to do. Um, it's not about um, elaborate rituals or um, self-deprecating actions or, or going to an extreme like asceticism mm -hmm. or, or something like that, or even legalism where, you know, we, we just make life so miserable by adding one rule after another and, mm -hmm. and threatening ourselves and other people. If you break this rule, then, then you might go to hell. Those mm -hmm. aren't the things that really create holiness in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, the way of Jesus is different um, from the ways that religion has often used to try to, um, mm -hmm. try to foster uh, holiness. Yeah. Um, it starts with the internals, with the heart. You read Matthew 16, 24 mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. There's another translation of that that I really like a lot. I, I think I, I put it down there. Can yeah. you read that? Anyone who intends to come to me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. That's good. We have to let Jesus drive. Let him take the wheel. <laughs> that I think that's, like a a, that's a song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how have you learned to do this in your life? How, how do you how do you give thanks to Jesus? Because hmm. you like to be in control. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's a tough one. I don't I don't do it perfectly, you know, at all. So it's a daily, just a daily. You got to give it over. Because we're not in control. We, we think that we're in control of things, and we're, we're not in control of really anything except for ourselves and what we decide to do. We're not in control of anybody else, circumstances, or whatever. So I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and, um, and she said that a lot of our problems stem from the fact that we want to be in control. And if we can give that control over, that's where we get the peace from. That's where we can find peace. Yeah. It's very hard to do, you mm -hmm. know, it's, um, I remember when I was a little boy and uh, my parents enrolled me in swimming lessons, mm -hmm. they thought it was important. You should know how to swim. And so, um, we were, we were going to jump into the water from the diving board mm -hmm. and I was scared to death. And so the, the class instructor, one of them was on the board with me saying, I got you, let's jump. And I was like, uh-uh, there's no way, it's not happening. <laughs> and then another instructor got in the water, like right at the edge of the, at the end of the diving board saying, look, I will catch you, it's okay, it's okay. And at that time, all I could feel was fear. I didn't wanna let go. I didn't wanna surrender control to somebody else, even though, um, it was going to be okay. And later I found out it was okay. Yeah. And, and I think that when I look back at that episode long ago in my life, that has served to define a lot of things in my life, to mm -hmm. serve as a reminder of if, if I don't let go to Jesus, right, then I'm never going to experience a lot of the joy of life because I'm going to be so afraid. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's a good point that we, we, it takes the fear takes the joy away when we're so afraid we have to let go and trust him. And that's where the peace comes and the joy comes from when we let go. Yeah. I mean, it's easier said than done. It's, it's really hard to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when we can do it, that's where we get the peace and the joy. Yeah, and that's why the, the whole following Jesus is not a one and done thing. It's not, yes. oh, you were baptized. All right, you're good. You're in. Everything's all right. Carry on with your life. It's, it's a process. That, and that's been something that I've struggled with like a lot of my life is the perfectionism and thinking that there's going to be a time where I'm going to get it. I'm going to nail it and having those goals and trying to meet that. And I've finally come to realize that life and the Christian walk is all about just, it's progress. It's not perfection. If you're making progress, that's the way that, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. about perfection. It's just, a, you're just a little bit better every day. Yeah. And, and sometimes, well, where do I start? What do I do? How, how do I, how do I follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. And 
I was looking through the comments here, and I like something that Carolyn wrote. Um, when we pray, ask to be of service to others. One great mm -hmm. way is mm -hmm. to just start serving somebody else. And yeah. one of the most faith-affirming experiences I've had is serving somebody who you know can never pay you back for what mm -hmm. you're doing. That is, I think that is the definition That's of true. selfless service. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times in our society, hey, um, you do something nice for me, I'm, I'm going to, you know, you give me a gift, I'm going to give you a gift. Right. Um, we, we return good for good, which is a great thing. But mm -hmm. when we serve people who cannot pay it back, that, that's, that's a very amazing thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the example of Jesus, because when he gave his life on the cross, we can never... We can never pay back never that incredible sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Never. Uh, but we can live holy lives of gratitude. Yes. So, so hey, Linda, thanks for joining us. It's okay. Uh, you can go back and, and when we're done and watch the whole thing all over again. <laughs> but we talked about this being a process, and um, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. So just a brief introduction here. Next week, we want to talk about a couple of aspects of holiness. And one is a, a, a fancy $5 word, justification. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't get disturbed by this. Uh, it's very simple. And then the other word is sanctification. So we're, we're going to talk about justification and sanctification because justification happens once. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is an ongoing process. What in the world do these words mean? And that's what we want to get in next week. But I'll give you a little teaser here. To be justified is to be made righteous. To be made righteous is to be made holy, as if you've never sinned. This is staggering. What are you talking about? I've sinned. I still sin. What? How in the world can somebody who sins be holy? Well, we're going to talk about that next week. Because um, it, it, it deals with how Jesus is working, uh, what Jesus has done for us, and, and how the Holy Spirit is continuing to work in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of sanctification is being set apart. And we're going to talk about, in practical terms, what exactly does that mean. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to, to get into that. Any preliminary thoughts on being justified or sanctified? No, I don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. I'll just wait and we'll learn more next week. Oh, we're going to have fun. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you have some prayer requests, um, uh, you can put them in the comments. Uh, sometimes we don't see those till after we pray, but we do pray for those requests. So uh, feel free um, to leave a message. Um, this video will be posted on the church Facebook page. So anytime during the week, you can leave a message. We'll see it, mm -hmm. and we will we will consider it an honor to pray for whatever uh, your request is. So okay. thank you so much for joining us and coming around our table tonight. And any final words? No. You've got 10 seconds. <laughs> you remember that show, The McLaughlin Report? They always ended like that. 10 seconds. <laughs> All right. So that's it? That's Nothing? it. All right. Well, let's pray together. Father God, we love you so much, and we uh, we want to continue to learn uh, what it means to uh, live a holy life. Um, God, we want to continue to learn what it means to uh, walk in the steps of Jesus. God, we want to be world changers. We want to be a pos We want to be positive influences. We want to we want to speak life and share hope and live in a way that shows the joy that we have. Uh, we want to be light. Uh, God, we, um, we want to do um, good things in your name. So God, teach us every day how to do this. Um, God, we know that we owe everything to you. So guard our hearts from becoming prideful. Guard us from being self-righteous and judgmental. And help us to learn to trust your grace and that and to remember that your grace is not just given to us, but is offered to all people. So God, we, we leave here committed to share the good news that brings great joy that's given for all people. 
Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all have a super duper week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.